Okay. <clears throat> so I am going to give a tutorial on how to make a 3D audio reactive layout that I just published. Yeah, it's this one. Here's the cool thing though. This was made using a stock photo, and I'll I'll show you what I mean as a stock photo. So if I search up um, future, uh, yeah, futuristic room. Let's do that. So you you have a lot of rooms here, and it's best if they're empty because if they have 3D objects inside of them, it won't really work as well. Like this one, for example, is it's okay, but it doesn't have that detail like in. I was going to do a futuristic room originally, but I decided not to because it was lacking in so much detail, um, so I went with the banded room. But let's see if we can find one. I'm going to search up empty. Oops. So yeah, you have a bunch of great choices here that you can use. Um, And you can make your own in Cinema 40. But, oh, for example, this one is actually really cool. Wow. Okay. Yeah, let's use this one. So we'll save this to my wallpapers. And we'll open up Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I, it's, it's pretty necessary in this tutorial. So you have your image in Photoshop. Now you want to go to Filter and click on Vanishing Point. And you'll have this uh, window. I don't know why it's not full screen. You want to zoom in a little bit. Oh, shit. oh that's not what I wanted. All right, so you have this 3D room. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Now you want to select create plane tool and this gives you like a little cursor like a looking like a target kind of thing and you want to make the room itself 3D. So we're going to click on the corners of the three dimensional spaces so let's see. So like from right here to here. No, no, no not that. So that's not going to work. So here we go. And depending what it looks like, um, it's very important that you get this right. So let's see. Can I do this right? No, I didn't do this right. Okay, I did that right. So it shouldn't have been red, apparently. Okay, now it's blue. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's much better. Right there is pretty good. Okay, now you should have this blue grid. Perfect. Let me uh, zoom out really quick. Um, whoops. Okay, right. So and just extend that further than what it is, and then you want to hold down Control and bring this down. You'll see it lines up perfectly with everything else, and then just without holding Control, you want to drag this out more as well. And then when you're done with that, you want to hold down control again on your keyboard or command on Mac and you want to drag this out until it reaches its point. You want to hold down control again, so forth. Um, in some cases you have to uh, fix it a little bit. Actually, no. Yes, you do. So like so, you want to drag this out a little bit more, and then you're going to want to bring this down by holding control, and now you have the wall. And then after when you're done with that, you want to click on this three bar area right here, um, click uh, export for Epifex, 
and we'll just call this uh, what it basically is futuristic you want to open After Effects. So we're going to make a new project and then we're going to right click. See, here's what people usually do and they ask themselves, well, why is it not working? Well, I'll tell you why it's not working. People drag in the actual VPE file onto here. That's, that's not going to work. Wrong. What you have to do is you need to right click, import, vanishing point, or .vpe. And then you want to locate it wherever it is. So it's on my desktop. It's right here. Bring that in, and it has all your footage, including it made you a composition with a camera. And um, it'll look stupid sometimes, like ridiculously stupid. But um, I mean, it's a pretty simple process. You can fix any um, anything that makes it look weird. So here, it's already looking really off. One big thing you'll notice that um, pisses me off a lot is the Z value. It's so goddamn low. It's ridiculous. And it's so far back in Z space. So what I do is I delete the parent and I delete the camera. And I don't delete the camera. I select all of these uh, layers and I push them back. That is so goddamn stupid. Like, that's a pretty good value. That's a good value. Then you want to make a new camera. And you want to have it at 15 millimeters, maybe 35 or 24. I don't like 28. Um, and you want to make that camera, and you want to zoom out. And I press C on the keyboard to access my camera controls, or by um, going to the different ones. And you'll notice that it's rotated, and that's a problem. So we'll make another null object. We'll toggle switches and modes. Actually, don't do that. Uh, make it a 3D layer, and then select all of these and pick whip them to the null. And then what you can do now is you can rotate it in Z space. And then wow, problem solved. It doesn't look so stupid anymore. And then we can just move, move the null, actually. Yeah, that's not. Uh, okay, I don't care. Now, uh, once you've aligned it and all that crap, um, next thing you want to do is, of course, not have the grid on. Um, so once you have your camera in line, you want to make another camera. And this will be called the edit camera. This camera you'll be using to um, move around this if you've already keyframed this camera. Like the position, if you want it to go from here to like, you not know, to here, for example. And you don't want to like mess with the movement like so to like fix something, but you need to move the camera. You just make another camera and stuff. So you'll see that moves, but then this camera. As I move this camera around, it doesn't affect the keyframes on this camera. All right, so let's let's fix let's fix some stuff up. So you'll notice that this layer is not touching the other walls. We need to fix that. And it's pretty damn far. And then once you have like all the walls aligned and crap, um, then you should be good. And I'll teach you how to do the camera stuff, so I'll come back to you once I have everything aligned and show you what else to do next. Okay, so after you have all your walls aligned, you'll notice these um, white spots right here um, that were generated. So, well, actually, yeah, let me fix this really quick. It'll align. There we go. So what you'll notice is these white lines. What you can do for now is ignore them. And, uh, but what I did originally for my um, 3D ARL was 
those white things that I had originally. So let's let's disable that. I had pre comp them. So for example, this wall right here was cut. So what I did was I duplicated it and feathered it with a mask. So before it looked like this, with this big white thing, like like so, right? And it was because of the stock um, stock image I chose, but I don't have it with me right now. So I just duplicated it, feathered it, and then for the middle did that again, and then it looked it looked pretty goddamn normal. So if you have that problem, you can just pre comp. Um, you can pre-comp one of these things like so, just right click, pre-comp, leave all attributes, and then go into that pre-comp and you can just like extend this or duplicate it and move it over here like so, maybe feather it so you don't see that cut off, uh, so forth. There are a lot of things you can do, but we're not going to do that right now since we got it pretty okay. The only important thing right now is uh, camera settings. So we'll disable the edit camera. We'll take away these two keyframes. And we're just going to align it in the center. I'd say that looks pretty good. That's, that's good. All right, now the next thing you want to do is you want to press a on your keyboard twice, so A, A. We'll get a bunch of these options. Now, um, the depth of field, just make sure that's off because we're not going to mess with that for now. But what you want to do is you want to increase your, I'm sorry, decrease your zoom. Um, actually, yeah, you want to decrease your zoom a lot. And what that does is, and once you zoom in, you'll notice it's a longer hallway or whatever you want. So as you increase, it's like camera vertigo or something. Um, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. It's this effect that people do. But you'll notice here, the hallway gets longer the more you zoom out. So there are a bunch of ways you can approach this into your um, designs and all of that stuff. But for now, I think we're going to go with 800. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, but make sure we can't see those cutoffs. And that looks pretty dope. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to press P. Actually, no, we're going to press... We're going to bring down the transform. And we're, we are going to alt-click point of position. The alt-click the time watch. And then drag this pick whip and drag it down to position. And what that'll do is no matter where you move the position to, it'll always focus on one center point with the camera. If you hadn't done a pick whip, here's what it would look like. And I don't really like that effect. It kind of looks weird, like you're high or something. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. So just go ahead and pick with that. After you've done that, you want to alt click this position and type in this expression. Wiggle to. Uh, so this value right here is how fast the wiggle movement speed will be and this right here is the How many pixels you want it to move off? So like for example, if this is 150 this will like go Around in that kind of area of 150 for the position You'll see what I mean. The more you increase this number the further it will wiggle around So you'll notice here now. Well damn that's that's pretty cool. And if it's off balance, like so, just move it back to the original position in the beginning of um, your comp. And then it, it should revolve around that. I don't know why it's not. Okay. But yeah, it should do that. So let's go a little bit to the right. So there you have it. You have your 3D room. You can add effects like, you know, an audio spectrum, which is what I had. So you want to make a new solid, apply the audio spectrum effect onto it, make the solid 3D, and push it back in Z space, bring it up, I'm going to make it a little thicker so you can see it better. Um, decrease the amount of 
things you have so you can make it a little bit thicker. Right, and then you want to um, make it white like I did before. Chain it, drag this down. It's really, you can do what you want to do, but the point is, you'll see it move in Z-Space. Any layer you make 3D, you will see in Z-Space. And if you have plugins like Trap Code Particular, they'll do the exact same thing. They'll move in Z-Space with this room. So technically, with sound keys, or with your expressions, you can make anything react to the song and move in 3, uh, 3D space. And that's my tutorial on how to make the 3D room. I hope you enjoyed. Hope this, this has brought you many more ideas to making an audio reactive layout. I'll have the project file actually linked below to Mediafire, so if you need this project file, I'll, um, I'll upload it. Put it in the description of the video.